I've been very lucky with my health. I had my tonsils out when I was seven and had a baby when I was 39 and otherwise haven't troubled hospitals at all. Then one morning I coughed up blood. I went to see a doctor that she said, you've got lung cancer. It was a body blow that left me in shock for months. I went back to see the consultant and she'd had the results, which indicated that there was a variant that they could target. And I thought, oh, wow. I was given the pills and told those pills should target the cancer. And they did. <laughs> I started with neuropathic pains when I was a kid. They were just like really horrific burning pains. And my mum did take me to the GP. Um, and at the time we were told that it was growing pains. In my mid-twenties, I started to get some chest pain and my GP sent me to see a cardiologist. He just said, you're too young to have heart problems and that was that. And then I collapsed in Manchester and I saw a registrar in A&E who said to me, I want you to see my consultant because he's interested in these kind of unusual heart issues. He said, it may be a genetic cardiomyopathy. Will you undergo some genetic testing? I got a call from the genetic counsellor and she said to me, you've got Fabry disease. And she said, look, you know, th this could have implications for your family. You are diagnosed with Fabry when they find a variant on the GLA gene. And this gene is responsible for producing an enzyme. This enzyme is responsible for breaking down fat. And if that fat isn't broken down, it builds up. Wherever that fat builds up causes the problems. And my children got tested. Three boys, two of whom had Fabry disease as well. They told me the best treatment option for me was enzyme replacement. So we had to actually have the bi-weekly infusion, which we were still grateful for because it was great to have a treatment option. My health as a 35-year-old man is really good and about a year ago my mum had been rung up by St Mark's Hospital based on a family history of bowel cancer that her sister had had and they had said, do you want to come in for uh, genetic predictive testing uh, to see if you might have this thing that we're investigating called Lynch syndrome. Her positive diagnosis um, led to the clinicians at St Mark's advising her that any children she has um, may be um, at risk of uh, carrying Lynch syndrome as well. To me it was just the most straightforward thing to do because I'm a firm believer that kind of knowledge is power. I had a really detailed consultation um, over the phone with one of the consultant gastroenterologists. But emotionally at the time it was just information that I was processing. It wasn't actually until weeks afterwards that it started to hit me that this would affect the rest of my life. It was all completely overwhelming. The people who were talking to me had no idea how little I knew. And there's never time for the feedback loop of, does the patient understand? It was a telephone diagnosis. And I think on balance, I probably would have preferred to have a face-to-face -face appointment. I think that human interaction to deal with such kind of life-changing news, I as a patient would appreciate as a face-to-face -face diagnosis. What was missing was the wraparound support. So there was no mental health support. The only reason I'm diagnosed now is because of luck. And after all the touch points I'd had with the NHS up to that point, it should not have been down to luck. The very fact that I had no risk factors should have been the red flag that something else was going on. Listen to the person in front of you and trying to take a step back and look at the big picture and it could give that individual and their families the answers that they're looking for. Genetic testing for me is something which I've felt a real benefit from. Even though it's telling me something potentially morbid, it's actually giving me the tools to do something about it and feeling like I can um, do something with it 
you know, in a positive way with my life. Mm -hmm.